Note to self, buy oil for that door. That seems unnecessary, considering the bar is, you know, closing. Gil, you're in my spot. Please. Please, Gil. Gil, please. Please, Gil. Gil, you're getting out of control. Please, Gil, no. Oh, sorry. Also, you're cleaning one of boss's chicken buckets. Did boss ask you to do that? If I told you she did, would you believe me? Without a doubt. Let's go with that, then. Right. Greetings. Ah, Stella. What can I get you? I'll go with the Bleeding Jane today. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Here you go. Thank you. What brought you here today? Waiting for Say? That seems to be the only reason you ever come here. I came by myself, actually. I was in the area and stopped to say hi. Oh. It's pretty interesting, though. When I first saw you, I doubted you'd ever come here again. Well, this place is... Terrible, I must admit. So quiet and secluded. It's also clean. Really clean. Don't you lie to me. Gil is the one you can owe that to. The guy takes pride in how clean he keeps things around here. Especially the toilets, ain't that right, fuckboy? If you ever need cleaning staff, he's a nice pick. Really? Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. He's a bit out of it today, though. I see. Hey, Joe. Have you heard of the new gold rush in the city? Gold rush. Everyone is paying small fortunes to get their hands on pieces of white knight suits. I think I heard or read something about that, but I'm having doubts, so probably not. In any case, how is it a gold rush? Well, the tech behind the suits was always safely guarded, but after the events at the bank... Sorry. After the events at the bank, the suits were remotely shut down, bricking many of them in the process. Many units dropped their armor right there and fled the lynchings that went on. Any white knights still stuck in their suit had to take the armor off manually to run away. It all happened in the middle of the lynching, so they'd be sitting ducks if they didn't. Some weren't that lucky, they got beaten up while they weren't able to move. So between the suits becoming glorified paperweights and many white knights going on the run, they ended up being, there ended up being a lot of junk laying around. But the whole scientific community is rejoicing. They're on a race to reverse engineer the suits and take as much technology as possible from them. And of course, even single pieces of the armor fetch a high price these days. Ah uh, yes, these days. A week after the events. Could anyone see and could anyone see any profit from those research? That research to justify those expenses? It's a new tech, a whole new field, ripe with patents just open for many, so I'd say yes. Huh. I mean, the BTC is literally a conglomerate built on pa patents and trademarks, I can see how. There is one weird case, though. Hmm. There's this guy named Jack, Handsome Jack. He's the captain of a very unique Blitzkrieg Corps unit. Unique? The guy had a really small unit, five people, including himself. The aesthetics of his unit suits was heavily modded to the point they didn't look like a squad to the point they looked like a squad of henshin heroes. Hen what? <clears throat> they looked really gaudy. But it turned out that the guy actually broke through the software and disabled the remote switch. Real talk though, I really want a Pepsi Man Zentai suit. He- that just reminded me of it. He has one of the few, if not the only, suits of armor with the OS intact. To say they're among the most wanted people would be an understatement. You know a lot about this. It's interesting, the amount of things you hear when dealing with drunk people of all kinds in the same place. It also helps to put on a front that makes people lower their guard. That should sound familiar to you. True. Wait. Here's a freebie, a fun fact. The failsafe was originally going to involve the armor blowing up and leaving no traces, but regulations and laws didn't allow that kind of technology near civilians. I guess even Zaibatsu Corps has its limits, huh? People love to demonize the Zaba Zaibatsu Corp because, let's face it, they're far from innocent, but they're not evil overlords, they're just... greedy, as most corporations are. They're just a big corporation. They just so happen to have control over what tantamounts to a city-state. 
but corporations will naturally resort to draconian methods. I've heard horror stories from people outside the city about trying to use product placement. If you so much as hold a bottle the wrong way or get in the way of a logo, you'll be in for lots of trouble. And let's not start with theme parks or the like, those are dystopias of their own. Then again, most of the demonization is due to Quincy being such a clown. He has no powers, anyway. He's just the front that whatever council behind Zaibatsu Corp chose. He makes a fool of himself and the attention is taken away from whatever it is that Zaibatsu Corp is actually doing. Yeah. So what you're saying is that Glitch City is basically a huge theme park. I've called the White Knights glorified mall security in the past, so yeah. Huh. No, seriously. Hen what? Hmm. <clears throat> Can I get a Brantini here, please? Nice. Change of topic. It's okay. You can be honest. There will be no judgment here. Who doesn't love the Power Rangers? Well, no one. That's who. There you go. It wasn't a very hard answer. Here. Thanks. So I take it you're in a good mood today. Does it show? A bit. Yeah, well... I managed to nab a couple of tickets for the Kira Meekly Encore concert. Nice. Alright, as it turns out, she was just here. Again? Um, sorry. Again. Can't believe I just missed her. I was surprised too. I was more surprised she remembered my name, though. And, like last time, she was quite the gra graceful client. Man, so those rumors about her being really nice in person were actually true? Amazing. I mean, you always want the famous people to be nice in real life, but having such backing to that claim, to hear that she's so nice to everyone. It's nice to hear, you know? In fact, many think that's what made her famous so quickly. How she's down to earth and totally accessible, making her someone everyone wants to root for. Ah, uh, I see. I'm not listening. Yeah, I mean, I guess you don't want to feel like you're supporting crappy people. Although, to be honest, I've never put much thought into that one. I mean... You say that, but... People like Kanye West get paid, so... Hell, half the time I have no idea who made what I use, nor do I care. Being a nice person will take you far, though. My daddy always insisted that being ruthless in the boardroom doesn't mean being an ass. And he, actually, and he has actually managed to get certain contracts over other more powerful people. All thanks to being a nice guy overall. Sounds like good advice. But more importantly, Daddy? <laughs> Do you really believe me saying she was just here that easily? You're not the kind to lie about stuff like that, so sure. True enough, why would you lie? Also, we have that cup over there that's still signed, so, you know, thanks, I guess. That said, can you go to the concert so easily? What about security and the like? My dad always has a unit keeping an eye on me from a distance. And you'd be surprised at how easily I can disguise myself with just a different hairdo and a cap. Different hairdo and a cap is a bit redundant. I see. I wonder if I could get in the disabled line with Say and her wounds. Although she'll probably nag me about how she doesn't need it and we shouldn't abuse that. Heh. <laughs> Hey, can you get me a classic drink? Sure, a classic. An all-time classic. The water. Here you go. Thank you. Do you have many servants around the house, Stella? Servants? Come on. I do, but they've been with us for so long, they're pretty much family. My dad has always said that if you earn someone's trust, they'll gleefully work for you, and everyone wins. We even had a young gardener that left to study engineering, and he actually came back. That seems like a terrible waste of an engineering degree. He still plant comes by every weekend to tend the plants. Man, that sounds nice. Let me know if you're ever in need of a job, I might find you something. Thanks for the offer. Wait, hmm? I just realized something's off with the whole tech gold rush story. What would it be? Well, first off, the gold rush makes me think of cowboys, and I can't think there are many cowboys in Glitch City, but that's beside the point. Wouldn't all that tech be patented anyway? I get trying to crack into it in the first place, but... 
That would be true if the tech was patented in the first place. It isn't. Saibatsu so has been have been so paranoid about making the White Knights untouchable that they never patented anything. A patent would be in a database that someone could hack and retrieve valuable info from. Not to mention they've been using tech from other companies without any authorization. And no patent registry in their right mind would approve that of, of a global shutdown signal. Let alone how it immobilized everyone still inside one of those suits. So the ones that were uploading upholding the law did so using suits that are all by means by all means illegal. The irony runs deep, wouldn't you say? I mean, you know corruption and all that. What di why do it though? When you have so much money you start thinking you can screw around with the rules. You often can, that's why. All that power makes you think you're above every law there is. And this city is what happens with those when the and this city is what happens when those with money start making the rules. I'm curious though, have you ever covered up any fuck-ups by using money? I think we've all done some things we're not so proud of at some point in our lives. Well, Jill, I gotta go. Always a pleasure. I'm not changing the subject. I'm just leaving. Ah, titty hacker. No, hello? You're pretty insistent on that one, aren't you? It's basic courtesy, something I will fight to uphold. That is my cause. Screw fucking world hunger. The rampant corruption, no sir, it's saying hello. First the greeting stop, then saying please and thanks stops, and before you know it, boom! Total anarchy. You're exaggerating. Am not. In fact, I'll go through that door again, and I expect you to properly greet me this time. She looks like she just slid off on a fucking conveyor belt. Hello, Jill. Once upon a midnight dreary while I pondered, weak and weary. Over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore. While I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping. As if someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. "'Tis some visitor,' I muttered, tapping at my chamber door. Only this and nothing more. "'You overdid it. You totally overdid it,' quoth the bartender. I did not. "'So you like poetry?' I had a phase. "'Can I get you something?' "'Let's start with a big cobalt velvet.'" <laughs> "'Here. Thanks.'" Oh yeah, there's something I've been wondering about for a while. Hmm. Does the name Shadow Master 69's Chronicles ring any bells? Hmm. <clears throat> wow, you went pale. No, the name doesn't ring any bells. They're on to me. They know it is I, X Pussy Destroyer 69X. May 22nd. Today. My daily card readings told me that I'd meet great change, thanks to an old man. My biology teacher told me I had, picked, I had been picked for an inter-school contest with my latest essay. I just knew a scientific theory on the idea of auras was as revolutionary as I thought. Soon, I'll bring the world into the occult science singularity. Later entries don't seem to have gone that well, though. Mentions of being laughed at, being lectured on why the essay was wrong. Jill. I made sure to delete that blog. No evidence should be left. I can think of at least six different sources off the top of my head that have all archived that stuff. Why? Why? Why have you destroyed me like this? Sheesh, relax, it's not that bad. What do you mean it's not that bad? Do you realize how embarrassing it all is? We've all been young, Jill, relax. It's not like you're still like that nowadays. That would have been embarrassing. You're not still like that, right? Gods, no. I gave up on the whole occult stuff. It's just that remembering all that stuff is... <clears throat> I don't know. I like the way you looked. All dressed in black with the rare accessory popping out thanks to the colors. I mean, at least you had the decency to use makeup and take care of yourself. So you have a pick. Oh god, you have a fucking pick? Why do you do this to me? Why do you dig out the sins of my past? 
I was bored. Last Friday, I had to take my mind off the whole Diana thing, so I ran a small background check on you, because that's what fucking no normal human beings do. Simple stuff, just checking past internet activity. Please don't run background checks like that. It just used a search engine, you know? I didn't request, jo request documents or anything like that. What led you to the page? You do realize your main mail account everywhere is still the one you used back then, right? Like I said, relax. You were obsessed with occultism. I wanted to kiss all the boys. And I kinda almost accomplished that in middle school, which still sort of haunts me to this day. <sighs> Never underestimate the lengths old classmates will go to to track you down. Especially if they think you're still the girl that kissed them for fun when they're lonely to boot. We all have things we're not too proud of as adults. <sighs> now I know how criminals feel when evidence is used against them. Whoa, hyperbole and a half. I have to ask though, why the 69? It was supposed to be 69, not 69. Like in reference to both the lovers and the hermit. I was convinced it meant wise choices. <laughs> Jill, there's nobody that would read that as 6 9. I was 12 at the time. Even at 12, I fucking knew what a 69 was. Just how innocent were you back then? You have no idea. I mean, you looking up the occult and, like, you don't know this? The story doesn't check out. It doesn't add up. Well, let's sweeten things up a bit. I'll have a sugar rush. Oh, thank goodness. That's one of the fastest drinks to make in the game. Look at that. Bam. Easy. Here. This is the thing. Say, Alma. Speaking of the past, what was your last long-term relationship like? Not the LARPer. That's sudden. You dug through my past, I've earned the right to dig through yours. Fine, fine. Long-lasting relationships. Well, there was that one that lasted a little over a fortnight. Romantic ones, I'm guessing. Yep. Hmm. Well, I've had about four boyfriends I'd describe as such that I've introduced to my family and all. The first one was in high school. I broke up with him because he cheated on me. Fair play. I remember the other girl trying to pick a fight and me just saying, Keep the fucker. That, mm-hmm. Yep, that's the appropriate response. The second was during my freshman year. I broke up with him after he thought it'd be funny to, pun funny to punch me in the arm. He starts with a friendly hit and before you know it... Anyways, that's... Yep, that's also the correct response. The other guy I met shortly after I dropped out... He was interested in marriage, but he wanted to get married only after half a year or so of knowing him. And then there's Richard. Who? I spent almost four years with him. We got along pretty well. We had awesome chemistry. I truly loved him. But as time went by, there was a rift that started separating us. He just didn't like my family. He didn't. Moreover, he wasn't a family person. He distanced himself from his own voice. From his own voice that he didn't want kids. There was a part of me that wanted to believe, even if just for a little bit, that maybe he'd change his mind. But as much as I loved him, that one detail brought a growing gap between us. And at one point I just... had to break up with him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fair play. But I'm not here to depress you. Bring me a beer, will you? Oh yes, because just, that's... A beer always cheers someone up. Here you go. Thanks for telling me that, by the way. Don't mention that. Okay, one more question and we're even. Wow, you really are embarrassed about that blog, huh? Sure, ask away. At what age did you get those implants in your boobs? Jill, I love you, and I know you're saying that in jest. But I've lived through so many rumors about me getting plastic surgery that I can't and won't take it as a joke. As such, and honoring our friendship, I'll just say this. They're real, and they're spectacular. Now ask the real question before I slap you. 
I'll grant you one, and only one chance to call me by my full name as a compensation, then. I'll gladly take your offer. It's funny that you mentioned slapping, because my real question was, why did you get your hands chopped? Huh, chopped. Well, there's a couple of reasons. The first is that I spend lots of time typing, and those replacements help me avoid carpal tunnel syndrome. Oh. There's other utilities, like how I can interface with many devices. For example, there's a tiny computer embedded in one of my glasses. If I move my index finger, it starts acting like the computer's cursor. There's lots more, but they're small things that don't sound that impress impressive when I say them out loud, like the ability to snap a man's neck in two. How did your family take the operation? They took it well enough, except for my mom, she freaked out for months. She even went to the hospital to ask for my hands. Don't you miss them? Sometimes, but just during emotional moments. But as luck would have it, someone else has them. Shortly after my operation, there was an accident on the highway. One of the victims was this young lady whose right hand got completely crushed. I told them to check if we were compatible and all that. I mean, implants are not everyone's first choice if they can get a natural replacement. A bit of cosmetic treatment and it could pass off as her original hand with no problem. Last I heard, we were compatible and the family agreed to the donation. I don't know what became of her, but I hope she's fine. And you didn't tell your mom about that? I didn't want her pestering the poor girl. So are we cool now? Are we even now? Are we? You were pretty pissed about my comment regarding your boobs. Again, I'm sorry. It sounded a lot less rude in my head. Yeah, don't worry about that. Besides, I get to call you Julianne once. Now you don't. Eh? Why? You just called me by my full name. Are you serious? One chance and only one chance and you just used it up. Damn it. I mean, I consider the full name to be first and last, but whatever, technicalities. Surprise! Hey Alma, this might be a weird tangent, but... Do you believe in ghosts? Hey! Not particularly, no. Although there was this paper I read once that was quite interesting. It proposed a scenario where nanomachine clusters would leave the body after death and then acted as a collective hive mind through resi resi residual brainwaves. The result would basically be an image, not unlike a hologram. Of course, the hypothesis fell through because such nanomachine density is impossible in a body. Even 5% of the amount needed is enough to make the blood too dense for the heart. And it's not like brainwaves are potent enough to create those reactions. Still an interesting read, though. I see. Hmm. Don't give me that look, it's not my fault that you're convinced yourself you're crazy. Well, I'll leave then. See you tomorrow. See ya. All done? I am. What about you, Gil? For some reason, the idle girl left him like that, it seems. You think? It might have been while he was out. True. Hey boss, you're a fan of wrestling, aren't you? I mean, you were a wrestler, so... That I am, yeah, why? I was wondering, isn't wrestling fake? Aren't twin tails for little girls and teens with 8th grade syndrome? 8th grade what? When you get down to it, wrestling is as real as a soap opera. I mean, you don't really expect a legal lawsuit to be fixed in the ring, right? Sure, in my ideal world you would solve legal problems through good old wrestling, but... <clears throat> no, seriously, 8th grade what? But you don't go around calling soap operas fake. It's just a show. It just so happens to use fights as an expression. You might as well see it as a unique form of theater. Besides, considering the injuries many art wrestlers suffer, it's not all fake. Huh, I didn't think about it that way. Sadly, I won't stand for anyone bad-mouthing wrestling. I will wrestle you right now, Jill. So, now I have to go and break Gil's back to make you humble. Oh, well, what? Yeah. Come here, fuck boy. Fuck bah. Eighth grade what? What a time to be alive. Who would have thought we'd get a bona fide idol in the bar? It's twice now. It's not that unusual. Oh, we made it. We made it. Oh, my goodness. We actually made it. We're going to celebrate. We're going to celebrate with a Maneki Neko to celebrate our wealth. Bam, Mineki Neko. Let's go.